Now, with this electric uh, vehicle hype that we have now, everybody thinks it is uh, something new, but it is not so. The electric vehicle is very old. It's almost, uh, uh, it is as old as uh, uh, the uh, history of automobiles anyhow. Everybody will remember <laughs> when he <laughs> did read Donald Duck uh, comics, that Oma Duck was driving an electric car. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> okay. Now, this electric car of Oma Duck was a reality. This is uh, an electric car of the time uh, around 1910 to 1916. It was produced in America, and at that time, the electric car had a, a market share of about 40% of all vehicles. In uh, uh, cities like New York, you had large fleets of electric taxis. And the private user of, ele of uh, cars, to some extent, uh, preferred the electric car to the gasoline car. And the main reason was it was more re reliable and it was easier to operate. This is a typical family picture of an early owner of a gasoline car. You see uh, the proud owner of the thing, you see the ladies who pose as if they were driving it, but actually a woman could uh, not drive a car like this. And the boy, you see, who is uh, trying to, is posing like cranking the engine, of course never could do that. Eh? It was hard to do, it was hard work, and it was dangerous. Uh, the backlash of the engine could easily break your arm. Yeah? And now this is uh, uh, of an operation instruction of the time, hand cranking, safe and easy. It was whether safe nor easy, it was hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and it was dangerous. And it was something for the real strong boys. Hmm? You see here <laughs> yeah, the strong boys associated also with military and things like that. Yeah? And uh, so it made for prestige if you had a, 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 a gasoline car, but it did show you can do it, you can crank the engine, or you was one like uh, the owner, who of course was a wealthy man and who could afford to pay a chauffeur. So this made part of uh, the prestige of the gasoline car. It was, you had to be a strong boy to, uh, to drive it, and you had to be wealthy to afford a chauffeur. And uh, the electric car, because of its uh, reliability, of course had its uses, yeah? But the king of the road image, yeah? <laughs> Started at that time, yeah? You see this car with this uh, front like this that will give you away from everything, uh, everybody else and so on. Yeah? That was the king of the road image that was sold from now on and not the practical use of the car. The practical use was the doctor car. A doctor needed an electric car uh, because, or preferred an electric car was his first choice because uh, if he was called to an accident at midnight, he had to go out, jump into his car and drive away. That was almost impossible with a gasoline car be be because uh, it was hard to start and it was not reliable. If you have, uh, have uh, started it, you still had to, to keep it running. That was not so easy. The electric car compared to this was much more reliable. And so it was the doctor's car. And it was the woman's car, as we have seen before. And interestingly, Henry Ford, who was the, the inventor of, of the modern aut automobile industry, uh, the Ford Model T was the first mass-produced car that could be sold at, uh, at a reasonable price, had to buy his wife, Clara Ford, an electric car. And he bought her three times an electric car in succession. Yeah? But she did hide it in the garage. <laughs> Nobody should know about this. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a gentleman never would drive an electric car because it was considered a woman's car. 
He didn't even want to be found dead in a woman's car. <laughs> and that uh, uh, and and that remains with us. Yeah? In uh, 1912, the electric starter was invented, and in the following years, it it slowly uh, entered all production cars, and so uh, the. Uh, interest in electric cars was going down. The re reliability of the electric car and the easy uh, starting of the electric cars became less important. And of course it were the, uh, the gentleman who bought the car and he did not want to buy a woman's car. He wanted the real thing and that was gasoline. And so, uh, around 1916, the damage of the electric car started and in about 1924, they have almost disappeared from the road. Now, we have a different situation now. The interest uh, in the prestige value of, of the gasoline car is, is going down a little. Yeah? Uh, and uh, now the, the idea of intelligent mobility it's not only about the technical side, about the vehicles, it's also about mobility in our head. How do we change our ideas of how to move around, how to, uh, to move your person and how to move your things? Can you, how can you do this different? And here we have the problem that we have no clear ideas of what the future will be. Electric cars are talked about, but almost nobody ever has seen one in, in reality. Nobody had, uh, had practice with it. There are only a few people, and I think in, in Austria it will be about 300 people who have ever driven an electric car. About 100 people own an electric car. And so uh, normally the, the consumer has no idea of how to go on, how to think about the future. And uh, it's the problem of the blank canvas. You see, any artist, any painter, maybe some of you do that, it's always the big problem how to start, how, what to do first. Yeah? And th then uh, the first step is, is the most hardest. Yeah? And I suggest that uh, we go down to the basics. Yeah? We look around and see what, what is needed by our environment. And then we take a first step and the first step should be use your fantasy. <laughs> Experience something new and best do something funny. And uh, that is one part of my experience. About 20 years ago, no, it's about 25 years ago, I have uh, provided the base bicycle for the Tom Turbo. Everybody knows the Tom Turbo. <laughs> the basic vehicle uh, uh, was supplied by me uh, to Thomas Bretzinger. And uh, um, Sepp Kaspauer, you see in the picture, uh, has done together with me uh, the electric drive system and uh, well, all the electronics that is in these things. Yeah? And that was enormous fun. Yeah? And it was really inspiring. And now I think there is no child looking at the uh, Tom Turbo series yeah, who is not convinced yeah, that electric uh, vehicles are not only possible, but they are intelligent, <laughs> they do a good thing. <laughs> and if you could buy it, I think everybody would like to have uh, a, a Tom Turbo. <laughs> So uh, that is my basic idea to, ma uh, to bring about changes you have to do, you have to offer something funny, not only philosophy about uh, environment control and things like that. Uh, that's far away from the, the uh, everyday thinking of people. Another part of, of my own experience is uh, more than 50 years ago, I was a member of a value analysis team at Steyr Daimler Puch in Graz. The uh, Puch 500, most of you will know it, it's a valued old timer now, uh, was a, a small car, very popular, and uh, it, uh, it was clear that after some time people w uh, would uh, want uh, to progress to something bigger, and the small factory uh, compared to uh, 
automobile industry standards, Steyr Daimler Buch was a small factory. And uh, they did very well with this uh, uh, Austrian uh, conversion of the Italian 500, it had a better motor. Uh, and uh, it was popular, but it was clear after some time they must do something new. The question was make something completely different, make a bigger car, or the, uh, the idea was also how to develop the basic vehicle to something different that would uh, live uh, uh, for a longer time in a mark market niche. And one of the suggestions was to make an electric version of the Puch 500. That is very actual now, uh, and uh, it uh, was 50 years ago. Excellent. But nobody actually at the factory uh, 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 took the idea. Uh, they, they simply forgot about it. The ti uh, time was not ready. But I bought one of the vehicles for myself. The first thing I did do, I installed two big truck batteries in the back seat. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the uh, Puch 500 something special. It had um, uh, a, a so-called uh, Dyna starter. So these are the starter and uh, the generator is, was a rather big machine and it was uh, possible to drive this car for several hundred meters uh, with, uh, with the starter. And with these big batteries I could go five kilometers. <laughs> And for me, that was a big inspiration. It was my first electric car. And, and uh, I was fascinated by this, while my friends thought I, I, I was crazy. <laughs> Why should I do this? Uh, but I have done it. Yeah? So now uh, to go on from this inspiration, I continued doing my thing. And Mobility inside our head is, is uh, important. King of the road is no idea for modern times now. Forget about it. But start with something new. Again, the blank canvas, what to do. Start your experience by going by foot, by bicycle, by public transport and learn this experience. Find out how, how good it is uh, to, to um, make this move, you meet new people, you, you uh, see, uh, have a different view of the world and this goes on. And use your own personal motor vehicle that you may, be need, uh, may need for carrying things or you may need in, in uh, areas where you have no public transport. Then you can use your own personal motor vehicle. But this should be electric. And it should be fueled by renewable energy, of course. Yeah? And it is energy produced by sun, wind, water. Everybody knows how it's done now. And uh, I must come to an end, I see. Imagine 500 square kilometers of solar panels can support the entire energy de demand of the world. Imagine this. We have several hundred thousand square kilometers of oil fields. And they have to drill down three kilometers and more to get the oil. And anyhow, whatever they do, the oil will be finished sometime. So electric is the way to go. And uh, I do a small part of the development. Thank you for listening. <laughs>